One of the biggest mysteries of our times is the multiverse theory. It suggests that our universe, with all its hundreds of billions of galaxies and almost countless stars spanning tens of billions of light years, may not be the only one. Instead, there may be an entirely different universe, distantly separated from ours, and another, and another. Indeed, there may be an infinity of universes, all with their laws of physics, their own collections of stars and galaxies, if stars and galaxies can exist in those universes, and maybe even their own intelligent civilizations. Recent reports suggest that NASA's James Webb Space Telescope may finally have found evidence that suggests the existence of the multiverse. Let's take a closer look. The concept of the multiverse arises in a few areas of physics, but the most prominent example comes from something called inflation theory. Inflation theory describes a hypothetical event that occurred when our universe was very young, less than a second old. In an incredibly brief amount of time, the universe underwent a period of rapid expansion, inflating to become many orders of magnitude larger than its previous size. Inflation of our universe is thought to have ended about 14 billion years ago. However, it does not end everywhere at the same time. It is possible that as inflation ends in some regions, it continues in others. Thus, while inflation ended in our universe, there may have been other, much more distant regions where inflation continued, and continues even today. Individual universes can pinch off from larger inflating expanding universes, creating an infinite sea of eternal inflation, filled with numerous individual universes. In this eternal inflation scenario, each universe would emerge with its own laws of physics, its own collection of particles, its own arrangement of forces, and its own values of fundamental constants. This might explain why our universe has the properties it does, particularly the properties that are hard to explain with fundamental physics, such as dark matter or the cosmological constant. If there is a multiverse, then we would have random cosmological constants in different universes, and it is simply a coincidence that the one we have in our universe takes the value that we observed. The biggest piece of evidence for the multiverse is that life exists, particularly intelligent life capable of making cosmological observations. Certain aspects of our universe seem special and important for supporting life, such as the longevity of stars, an abundance of carbon, the availability of light for photosynthesis, and the stability of complex nuclei. But all of these features are typically not the case if you get handed a random universe. The multiverse offers one explanation for why all these features are favorable in our universe, which is that other universes exist as well, but we observe this one because it's capable of supporting complex life. In other words, so many things had to line up just right in our universe that the existence of life seems improbable. And if there was only one universe, it likely shouldn't have life in it. But, in a multiverse, there are enough chances for life to appear in at least one universe. But this theory is not especially compelling, so most scientists remain skeptical of the multiverse idea. Many scientists have tried to find more physical, hard evidence for the multiverse's existence. For example, if a neighboring universe happened to be close to ours long ago, it may have collided with our universe, creating a detectable imprint. That imprint could be in the form of distortions in the cosmic microwave background or strange galaxy properties in the direction of the collision. But all of these types of searches have come up empty, so the multiverse remains hypothetical. Scientists have been searching for evidence of the multiverse by looking for special kinds of black holes that could be artifacts of pieces of our universe that separated into their own universe via a process called quantum tunneling. If some regions of our universe separated this way, they would have left behind bubbles in our universe that would turn into these unique black holes, which may still exist today. The potential detection of these black holes could then point to the existence of a multiverse. Perhaps the most mind-bending implication of the multiverse is the existence of doppelgangers. If there is an infinity of universes but a finite number of ways to arrange particles in any individual universe, then the same patterns are bound to be repeated eventually. That would mean that at some incredible distance, there would be an exact copy of you watching this exact video. And because there would be an infinite number of universes, there would be an infinite number of these exact scenarios all happening simultaneously.
Another compelling type of multiverse is called the many-worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is the theory that mathematically describes how matter behaves. Proposed by physicist Hugh Everett in 1957, the many-worlds interpretation predicts the presence of branching timelines or alternate realities in which our decisions play out differently, sometimes producing wildly different outcomes. This theory states that there's an infinite number of parallel Earths, and when you do an experiment and you get the probabilities, basically all that proves is that you live on the Earth where that was the outcome of that experiment. But on other Earths, there's a different outcome. According to this interpretation, versions of you could be off living the many different possible lives you could have led if you'd made different decisions. However, the only reality that's perceptible to you is the one you inhabit. They're all overlapping in dimensions we can't access. This type of multiverse is referred to as a level 3 multiverse, where multiple scenarios are playing out in branching realities. By contrast, the multiple universes predicted by some theories of cosmic inflation are what scientists call a level 2 multiverse, where fundamental physics can be different across the different universes. Unfortunately, scientists don't think it is possible to travel between universes, at least not yet. Even though certain features of the universe seem to require the existence of a multiverse, nothing has been directly observed that suggests it exists. So far, the evidence supporting the idea of a multiverse is purely theoretical, and in some cases, philosophical. Some experts argue that it may be a grand cosmic coincidence that the Big Bang forged a perfectly balanced universe that is just right for our existence. Other scientists think it is more likely that any number of physical universes exist and that we simply inhabit the one that has the right characteristics for our survival. An infinite number of alternate little pocket universes, or bubble universes, some of which have different physics or different fundamental constants, is an attractive idea, but an elusive one. Scientists argue about whether the multiverse is even an empirically testable theory. Some would say no, given that by definition, a multiverse is independent of our own universe and impossible to access. But perhaps we just haven't figured out the right test. Some physicists believe in a flatter version of multiple universes. That is, if the universe that we live in goes on forever, there are only so many ways that the building blocks of matter can arrange themselves as they assemble across infinite space. Eventually, any finite number of particle types must repeat a particular arrangement. Hypothetically, in a big enough space, those particles must repeat arrangements as large as entire solar systems and galaxies. So your entire life might be repeated elsewhere in the universe, down to what you ate for breakfast yesterday. At least, that's the theory. But if the universe began at a finite point, as nearly every physicist agrees that it did, an alternate version of you likely doesn't exist. In the 1970s, Stephen Hawking proposed that dark matter, the invisible substance that makes up most matter of the cosmos, may be made of black holes formed in the earliest moments of the Big Bang. Now, astronomers have developed a theory that explains not only the existence of dark matter, but also the appearance of the largest black holes in the universe. An exciting aspect of this idea is how it elegantly unifies two challenging problems scientists are hard at work on. These are the probing of the nature of dark matter and the formation and growth of black holes. Dark matter makes up over 80% of all the matter in the universe, but it doesn't directly interact with light in any way. It just floats around, being massive, affecting the gravity within galaxies. It's tempting to think that black holes might be responsible for this elusive stuff. After all, black holes are famously dark, so filling a galaxy with black holes could theoretically explain all the observations of dark matter. Unfortunately, in the modern universe, black holes form only after massive stars die, then collapse under the weight of their gravity. So, making black holes requires many stars, which requires a bunch of normal matter. Scientists know how much normal matter is in the universe from calculations of the early universe, where the first hydrogen and helium formed. And there simply isn't enough normal matter to make all the dark matter astronomers have observed. And that's where Hawking came in. In 1971, he suggested that black holes formed in the chaotic environment of the earliest moments of the Big Bang. There, pockets of matter could spontaneously reach the densities needed to make black holes, flooding the cosmos with them well before the first stars twinkled. Hawking suggested that these primordial black holes might be responsible for dark matter. 
While the idea was interesting, most astrophysicists focused instead on finding a new subatomic particle to explain dark matter. What's more, mortals of primordial black hole formation ran into observational issues. If too many formed in the early universe, they changed the picture of the leftover radiation from the early universe, known as the cosmic microwave background. That meant the theory only worked when the number and size of ancient black holes were fairly limited, or it would conflict with measurements of the CMB. The idea was revived in 2015 when the Laser Inferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory found its first pair of colliding black holes. The two black holes were much larger than expected, and one way to explain their large mass was to say they formed in the early universe, not in the hearts of dying stars. In new research, scientists at the European Space Agency took a deep dive into the theory of primordial black holes, exploring how they might explain the dark matter and possibly resolve other cosmological challenges. To pass current observational tests, primordial black holes have to be within a certain mass range. In the new work, the researchers assumed that the primordial black holes had a mass of around 1.4 times the mass of the Sun. They constructed a model of the universe that replaced all the dark matter with these fairly light black holes, and then they looked for observational clues that could validate or rule out the model. The team found that primordial black holes could play a major role in the universe by seeding the first stars, the first galaxies, and the first supermassive black holes. Observations indicate that stars, galaxies, and supermassive black holes appear very quickly in cosmological history, perhaps too quickly to be accounted for by the processes of formation and growth that we observe in the present-day universe. Primordial black holes, if they do exist, could well be the seeds from which all supermassive black holes form, including the one at the center of the Milky Way. And the theory is simple and doesn't require a zoo of new particles to explain dark matter. This study shows that, without introducing new particles or new physics, scientists can solve mysteries of modern cosmology, from the nature of dark matter itself to the origin of supermassive black holes. So far, this idea is only a model, but it could be tested relatively soon. The James Webb Space Telescope, which launched on Christmas Day 2021 after years of delays, is specifically designed to answer questions about the origins of stars and galaxies. And the next generation of gravitational wave detectors, especially the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, is poised to reveal much more about black holes, including primordial ones, if they exist. Together, the two observatories should give astronomers enough information to piece together the story of the first stars and potentially the origins of dark matter, something that could end up proving the existence of the multiverse. If you found this video informative, you may also like this one, which looks at the first images taken by the newly launched JWST. Do you think the JWST will find a door to the multiverse? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.